Hey everyone, Sir Terman here again. So I know I've had a TF deck yesterday, but I have to bring you another TF deck today because I'm having a lot of fun with Annie Twisted Fate. So if you have not seen what this deck does, it's an it's an Atlas control deck playing Bilchwater that tries to win the game by summoning Tybalk from uh, Raven Bloom Conservatory and then having your Riptide Rats come down on the field and now each of the cannon barrage is gonna deal three to a unit and two to the Nexus if, if, the, if the unit is dead. So all of a sudden, your Riptide Reds can just completely clear almost any board in the game and push a lot of lethal damage to the Nexus. Imagine now when you can get two tie box in the field, it becomes really crazy out of control really, really quickly. Uh, so that's like the main combo of this deck, right? So tie box into Riptide Reds. And that's the whole reason why you play this deck. The rest of the cards are just really Nazis kind of control decks, uh, not, not like typical Nazis control cards, right? So Triple Annie, because uh, he helps us also advance the, the, the Conservatory every time she attacks. Triple Blaze Edge to kind of synergize with Disintegrate and also synergizes with your Triple Flock and your Two Scorch Earths. We are playing Two Scorch Earths to Disintegrate, splitting it two and two, just so that we have Scorch Earths available to be able to deal with Thralls, because it's a very popular deck. Uh, Raven Room Conservatory, we kind of already talked about it. With the Build to Water package, we are also playing Twisted Fate, right? Now, it's very likely that Twisted Fate is not going to level up, but the Twisted Fate skill, the Destiny card, counts towards the Conservatory progress, right? Uh, so it ends up being pretty good. You can also do Red card to clear everything out. If you have a Tide Book on the field, that Red card is going to be doing two damage to everything, etc., etc., etc. So because we're playing Twisted Fate, we are playing some of the Joe package, like Fortune Croker and Sap Strafen. Uh, to, you know, synergize with Twisted Fate, but the Sap especially is also really good because it can draw us into one of our cheap Nazis spells or be able to attack the Nexus to be able to get us a free Red Tide Rats trigger. Because, uh, you know, we do kind of struggle sometimes to be able to trigger the Plunder. Uh, between Blaze Edge and between your Elusives, you're able to do that. And between Death Hand, you're able to do that pretty often. Uh, we have Make It Rain and Death Hand, which are both there to trigger your Red Tide Rats. And they also get pretty crazy very quickly as well when you have the Conservator and the Tybalk already summoned because then this starts dealing 3 to the enemy and this starts dealing 2 to multiple enemy. Instead of House Spiders, I'm playing Double Trouble. Uh, I know it's a little more expensive, uh, but it is a spell. I can use it with Spell Mana and it also advances the Conservatory. So that's the idea between Double Trouble in this deck instead of House Spider. And then 3 uh, three uh, Naga, Naga Kaboros just so that we can actually consistently draw into our combo. And the unit that we get can serve as a surprise blocker into the opponent or even a surprise attacker sometimes if we have a way to do lethal. Because once you have a tie book in the field, obviously this thing becomes a three, you know, a three-two. Uh, so it ends up being a pretty decent unit to attack with if you need it. Uh, so that's kind of the breakdown of the deck. Again, just, just kind of like a Nazis control tech variant. Uh, just instead relying on the combo, instead of like winning the game with Astrial, like if you're playing PNC. Is instead winning the game usually with Rift Tide Rats. Like when you get this combo on the field, it's such a big tempo swing that usually opponents are not able to come back from that. And that's why this deck makes sense from that perspective. So, anyways, hey, yeah. So, if you like the content, remember you can subscribe to us. We post a lot of videos every single day. Just wait for the end of the video for some mulligan tips. And I hope you enjoy the games coming out soon. So, in this matchup, we'll be going up against Jace Elise Sentinel Control. Uh, I don't think Twisted Fate is going to do a lot in this matchup, to be honest. I guess Twisted Fate is nice because he can help me draw. And he does advance the Conservatory, to be honest. It might not be bad. Yeah, let's keep Twisted Fate. Let's keep Twisted Fate just for the draw. Mm, not a great hand to start with. The good thing is that we have the Tide Book, right? Ah, uh, sorry, we have the Conservatory. And this opponent shouldn't have... I guess they could run Aftershock. Some list probably are running Aftershock with the... Uh, yeah, so we have the combo, so we have the Tybok and the Rats, which is a combo that we're looking for. I'm trying to see how the opponent deals with this combo, because we can kill like all his units that he summons, like like Jace and stuff like that, right? We have plenty of ways to trigger Nexus damage. This is a little bit annoying, we don't have any blockers for that guy, we don't have the double trouble. Yeah, we don't have the double trouble, that's a little bit annoying. Putting could Mystic Shot this... Twist the fate, right? I think it's just the draw. I think I want to see if I can get like missed uh, at the double trouble or something else. And he also helps us advance our conservatory, right? So, which is the whole point. Croker is not bad. 
So Croker is not bad. Probably he just wants to kill this, right? He wants to kill Twisted Fate and advance his little guy. Uh, he did spend a lot to do it, though. He did spend a lot to do it. I think I'm going to just make it rain. And then next time we can death hand flock. But I don't like the fact that we're kind of tapping out of ways to deal with Jace. Which is the annoying part. We might just flock this guy and call it a day. We might just flock this guy and call it a day. You know what? Let's do it both. Let's do it both. It also, it also means that we're going to get tie on turn 7. Let's do it both and call it a day. I'm going to pass and see what the opponent summons first before we commit the Annie. Okay, so opponent did a Thermo earlier to kill TF, which means that they probably don't have a Mystic Shot. So if we can do Annie, and if we actually get to attack with Annie, we'll get the tie bulk on turn 6. So we're always going to open attack. 100%. I don't even care if the opponent is able to block the Annie here. Because I just want to get the tie bulk down. We can always place Edge or do anything else to kill this Sentinel, so I'm okay with this. Although I want to keep, I want to keep the Blaze Edge for the Reptile Rats, right? So there is the whole, there is the whole idea, right? The Reptile Rats combo. Do your vengeance, man. I know, like I know he wants to do the vengeance so bad. Uh, that would, that would hit, that would hit us for seven. Like he, he has to have a way to remove this, guys. Because if, if he does the vengeance. He gets three mana back from the fortune tomorrow. Like all I want is to summon my Tybalk. Now that we have our Rick Reds on the field, it doesn't matter to me what else you do. These are also fearsome blockers. He's gonna do Jace. And the Sentinel. Interesting. I don't think that's I don't think that's enough. We even get a blocker here now for free. Because you don't have a leveled up Jace, you will have to open up with the Vengeance. I guess it doesn't have to be a Vengeance, I guess it could be anything else. But you let us draw now, you let us draw and let us get another blocker. Which we can continue summoning blockers, right? The Fearsome is the only scary part of your whole deck. And again, next time we just Blaze Edge into Reptile Rats. I guess we let him do the, we let him do the Piercing Darkness, right? A little bit unfortunate there. He could bow feast this guy. But if he does that, we can double trouble. I still think we double trouble anyways. So I think we double trouble just so that we potentially have blockers if the opponent does anything like crazy. It's also a potential that we draw like an elusive. And if we draw an elusive, it means that we can actually try to open attack first before we commit the blaze edge. So because we drew the elusive, we can actually open attack, force the opponent to respawn here, to respond here. And if they don't respawn, we do a free Riptide Rats. And then next turn we have enough for Blaze Edge plus Riptide Rats again. And there we go. Don't kill the Jace, but we do get the Abus Ferros, which is not bad. We can always kill the Jace with the Blaze, Blaze Edge if we wanted to. I don't think we need to though. Don't think we need to. We got the we got the, we got the uh, the Albus Ferrers, which is could be annoying, right? Because it does damage that we cannot stop. Uh, Jace will level up, but I don't think he's gonna have enough value to like really. All he's doing here is letting us push more damage. I don't think the Blaze Edge is necessary here, because again, we want the Blaze Edge to be able to trigger um, the Riptar Rats next turn. I don't think the opponent has a way to cut back from double Riptar Rats. Because he's going to lose his Jace. He's going to lose anything that he summons. And the opponent's probably going to have to commit a spell first. Like a Shock Blast. And once they do that, we can commit the Blaze Edge and then respawn. Or we can just... No, it has to be Blaze Edge. I thought I had enough mana for Death Hand, but I need 11. I only have 10. So sent, we, do, we, we repeat the same thing, yeah? So he has to commit that. Right? So he has to commit the Dumping Shadow. And because he has to commit this on the stack... We can respond with Blaze Edge to his Nexus and then do the second Riptide Rats and clear his whole board. And now opponent is very sad. 
opponent goes down to 4 HP, loses the whole board. We do Annie. And we can actually um, summon the Nagakaboros at burst speed as well. And have enough attackers that the opponent should have a bad time dealing with us. So Annie's dealing 3 to the Nexus. This is going to go up to 2 attack. I mean, sorry. This is going to go up to 3 attack because of the other Nagakaboros. Nagakaboros himself is also 3 attack. And there we go. Open attack. Lethal here. Should be lethal. The opponent should have a way to stop this. And even if they do, we can always go for the Greedy and go for more uh, Raven Claws. And they have access to a Blaze Edge and a Death Hand that's team like 3 to Nexus and each. We should finish the game with. So yeah, GG's. So in this matchup, we'll be up against Thralls. Now, we play Scorched Earth. So if the opponent commits too much to the Thrall, they're going to get punished by that. I think I'm gonna have Mulligan for it. I think I'm gonna have Mulligan for it, or at least try to get Annie anyways, or the Raven Blue. Okay, so now we have the Rip Tide plus the Conservatory on the field, which is what we're looking for. I'm gonna go ahead and start advancing this from the start because we have our combo, right? So we have our combo with the Tie Book plus uh, Conservatory on the field. Problem is, the rest of our hand doesn't look too great. Our hand, the rest of our hand does not look too great. Now, Having this many spells does mean that we have a good chance, I guess, of drawing, um... So we can do this, this... Is that even good, though? Like, do we even care about the Lysandra? I'm gonna do... I, so the, re the only reason I'm doing it is because I want to be mana efficient, and I also want to start advancing the Conservatory, because I don't think Lysandra's that good. We could always... We could have always saved that for, like, a throw. But I think it's fine. He also allows us to play the Sap next turn and actually get the help the, the, the mana from it instead of having full mana we end up with the score sheriff so we end up getting the score sheriff anyways i think we wait and see if the opponent commits anything else on on the throw before we commit the score sheriff so he ended up going for that one i think i'm still fine right i think i'm still fine opponent's kind of showing us that they don't have anything yet to actually trigger that throw if they try to do the fight job next turn, we have plenty of ways to kill it. So I don't think it's a big deal. We could just death hand the Harbinger right now. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm going to do this now. I'm going to do this now because I don't want that throw to get summoned. So at least we're able to stop that one. Uh, we can death hand, I guess. Could death hand. Go go like this. And yeah, we could go like this. I do want to summon Tybalt to be honest. Because this, this card is always going to die, right? To like an avalanche. I want to summon Tybalt next turn. I'm just trying to see if there's like any chance of me doing it. Okay, well. Uh, we still... No, we can just summon Tybalt next turn, right? No, I still want to summon Tybalt this turn if I can. If I can, I want to summon Tybalt this time. So I think it's actually okay to keep my Annie back. Perfect. Opponent's down to just... Oh, especially now. Especially now we have a second Annie. So I'm actually going to summon the... So the second Annie gives us access to the Disintegrate. And next we can just Rats, right? We always Tybalt here. Like it's tempting to have, it's tempting to pass. It's definitely tempting to pass, but we always tie ball because he enables our brick turrets on turn eight next turn, and that's the combo that we want, right? Like even if the opponent gets one throw here, they might get two throws, right? They might have Talia, so they might have Talia here. It's not a Talia. That is not a Talia. I guess I guess they get to summon two next turn no matter what. Imagine possibilities. It still loses to the disintegrate, and now we actually know that the opponent. Wow. Wow. So wow, we just we just kind of kill the opponent, don't we? We actually just take two damage only. I guess the downside here is that we lose. We're not able to actually hit the nexus, right? 
We're not actually able to hit the nets as if we go like this. I think it's fine. I think it's fine. This is this is like his only two throws, right? We kill we kill one. The other one goes down to one HP that we can kill anytime we make a rain. If the opponent doesn't block with the Annie, it means that they just get hit by the Riptide Rats anyways. So they always want to block, right? So they always have to block next turn regardless. Because if they don't, they just lose. I guess now they don't have to block, they can just block with Lissandra, because Lissandra also does enough damage. They get one more throw back. I still don't think that's going to be enough, though. We can still just make a rain to kill that Frost Guard anytime that we want. We can still make a rain to kill that Frost Guard. What I'm trying to see if, if I actually need to do it. Because we can just flock it, right? Like, I'd rather leave Make It Rain to combine with the Disintegrate now. Opponent even decides to go like this. Uh, I don't think that's going to matter, my friend. Because we can do this, right? We can Make It Rain. Do I even want to block? You know what? I'm going to block it. We can Make It Rain, right? We can make it rain and we can actually flock Lady Sandra. Ooh. So we can take the eight or we can just flock. And also disintegrate this Lysandra. That throw is kind of scary though. We could also just twist the fade instead. Does that make sense? I think I'm gonna blue card. I think I'm gonna blue card. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna block the frost card. No, cause I, I don't think I can afford to take that damage. We're gonna actually blue card and hope that we get some way to activate our Never lost our riptide rats. So he did have the right negation. That throat is gonna be a six. We get a scorch earth, so we can actually kill that throat. Opponent gets another one, anyways. So it's not gonna matter. Does the ice shard? Yeah. So the twist of face always is gonna die to the ice shard. Uh, we could actually kill. We could actually kill his only Sander by the way. I always forget about that. So if you act, you can actually disintegrate as the opponent does um, ice shard, and he will actually kill the Lissandra. Fortunately, we don't really get value here. What I can do is force him though, right? But we can just do this now. It's kind of it's a little bit annoying though, because this loses to the Asha, right? Especially if we get one health units. Yeah, we do. So we lose to the Asha regardless. Opponent decides to go all in on this one. It's really because really all we're looking for is just a way for us to be able to enable Riptide Rats. The moment that we do, we kind of just went from there, right? So we're gonna just disintegrate Lissandra here. And then we can score sure the Draclorn, although I think I think it's better to score sure the throw. I think we go I think we go like this first. I think we have to try to kill the Draclorn first. I mean the tough Nexus is annoying and obviously the one attack that he does that she does every time. I wanna see if the opponent commits anything else on this guy. If he doesn't, I'm just going to do this then. Yeah, I'm just going to do this. Because I can't let him have another uh, time in a bottle and go from there. Right? Unfortunately, no way to trigger Riptide Rats is actually super annoying. I guess that's the problem with this deck, right? 2, 4, that's 5. We take another one here with the Ice Shard. If opponent has sense of times, they can trigger the trolls. I just can't believe how many trolls we have actually hit this game. Um, hmm. I guess we needed to kick, save that Blaze Edge like all those turns ago. Yeah, I guess all those turns ago we needed to save the Blaze Edge. That's not really doing anything for us either. And now the opponent gets his uh, the Talia as well. If the opponent has an Entomb, we just lose the game here. So we got the combo early on, but we never were able to actually use it. 
don't need to do like if the opponent wants to pass here that's fine yeah so this is another five damage i guess it's not five damage because we can do the ayanaga kaboros to actually be able to block stuff so we can actually block things here you know what let's just go like this oh we get the death hand so the death hand is really nice um death hand is really nice Problem is the trolls. We still lose to the trolls. Next turn, anyways. We keep this guy alive, but he he loses he loses to the ice shot anyways. Ah, uh, this is still in four, so I want to get rid of the Lissandra. This each of these barrage is dealing four, right? So that's why I want to get rid of the Lissandra. Opponent doesn't let me do it. I guess we can just get rid of her next turn, anyways, with the uh, uh, death hand. We're only taking two damage here. So we can death handle Lissandra. Because the, the death hand is dealing four, right? So Lissandra will die. Opponent still gets access to one more ice shard. And then the opponent just needs to summon one more throw. I mean the Riptide Reds will be a good blocker, but it's not gonna be that good of a blocker. I guess we can do Croker plus Riptide Reds next turn. The Croker is a decent value. If the opponent has another battle negation, then we lose the game, right? The flock can kill the Talia if we wanted to. Isn't this game then? So the opponent's gonna go like this. The opponent's gonna go like this. We can we can flock the Talia right here. But if the opponent has a second Talia, we get punished by that. And we can rip Tyrets, and each of these guys is doing three to the Nexus. Yeah, I'm gonna go like this. If the opponent has it, they have it. If the opponent has like a bad negation to stop our rats, then they have it. Can't do anything about it. I think obviously I think he's just gonna have another I think I just he's just gonna have another Talia or another Lissandra. Yeah, there you go. So he gets another Talia, so we do let him get the value there. But then we're able to kill that Talia anyways, and opponent goes down to 3 HP. If the opponent has a sense of time, they can summon a Troll. The Troll is only doing 8, we're going to survive at 1. We can do the Iron Aga Kaboros as burst speed and potentially join to like a Blaze Edge or another Death Hand. Because opponent is down to 3. Like any, any, any direct face, even make it rain, right? Any direct face damage that we have is going to completely kill him. Ooh, we could have also attacked, but I think if we attack, obviously, we just lose to the Curator, right? When we can just block the Curator with the Nagakaboros. So if the opponent open attacks, we live at 1. So Blaze Edge, make it rain. Ha. Huh. This gives us the most chances of joining to one of them. I guess opponent decided to do it this way. That way he doesn't have to actually... Wait, this actually puts us to death. <laughs> we actually messed up. Uh, I forgot about that because, again, we were like one off. Yeah, actually, wow. I just threw. Oh, I mean, we always died to the Rabin anyways, right? So we always died to the Rabin anyways. So it wasn't really a throw. Because the Rabin is dealing two and this was dealing four. And we ended up not drawing our, uh, our burn. So a little bit unfortunate. We ended up not drawing our, our face burn early on to actually have the red type reds come down and just wreck him. So then the opponent was able to just stabilize and come back in into the game. So yeah, GG's. So in this matchup, we'll be going up against Astro Kaelin. So kind of like mid-range versus mid-range. We have our combo though. Like our combo is a lot more powerful than almost anything that they can do. However, we do need to be careful not to use high bulk early i think i'm uh, sorry not to use the conservatory early because this can this is vulnerable to a scorched earth do we do it anyways so let's say that the opponent spends their scorched earth in the conservatory i might be okay with that i might be okay with them spending a conservatory as a, a scorched earth in that i never attacking there because obviously we want annie 
Ooh, no spells. No spells in the top five. No spells in the top five cards of his deck. Oh, wow. Nice high roll. Nice high roll. I think I like doing the Shell Shocker. So I like doing the Shell Shocker because it means that we don't have, you know, we can summon Annie if we wanted to. Although I don't think we're ever summoning Annie. But it also means that we can Red Card. And I think Red Card is fine. So the reason that Red Card is okay is because I know that the opponent is never going to let this Twisted Fate alive to actually be able to level. So doing the blue card doesn't do anything to me. I guess I, I guess I, I guess blue card gives me a draw though, right? The draw is not bad. Yeah, I guess the draw is not bad. The draw could have been better, but I mean at least this way we don't have to worry about getting hit by a three three. Opponent needs to score sheriff our thing before we're able to actually draw into it. Otherwise they're gonna be in trouble. I'm gonna do any first and just bait out his mystic, his second mystic right now. Yeah, there you go. So by doing the any first, we bait out the second mystic, and now we can do our twist of fate. This is gonna trigger pretty quickly to opponents. I think opponents like desperately looking for that scorch earth combo. I'm gonna go like this. So I'm gonna go like this now. It's kind of funny. So that we're able to actually uh, do this at, at, birth, at fast speed. Because we can do the disintegrate if we need to. To be able to actually trigger the tie bulk. So I think that's fine. I think we actually get trigger the tie bulk. Oh, or now we can just do death hand. It's probably a slightly better. So sli slightly better probably to do that. I don't think I need to actually attack with anything else, do I? I think I can go. I think I, I think I can just save my units. If a player has the score sure here, it's not gonna be enough. Okay, so we get Tybo. We get Tybo, and then we have Death Hand, uh, and, 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 and we have Death Hand to be able to kill that Kalen. We can also just blow him out next turn, right? So we can just block, block, block. Tybo this Tybo this turn. And then next time we have Riptide Reds. We have the Elusive to, to be able to do it. Let's see it. Because we have the Overwhelm, we have an Elusive. Two ways to trigger... Uh... Okay. I don't want to use the Death Man because I want to wait to trigger Riptide Reds. So I don't want to use the Death Man because I want to wait to trigger Riptide Reds. Uh, because... Just doing the... Uh... Just doing the other stuff is unreliable. Oh, of course. We draw the we draw the blaze edge, right? Anyways. So we draw the blaze edge anyways. So flock now. Does opponent level up the Astrial? I guess it's fine. I guess if even if he levels it up, we still get the value here from the Pirates. Potentially killing one of the Astrials. So opponent, opponent will have to commit a spell. Okay, so it doesn't have it, so we get to just go ahead and attack. Uh, sorry, go ahead and do a Rip Tyrat. Opponent's down to four cards. We have a Disintegrate plus Blaze Edge combo if we need to. We don't clear his whole board, but we do this. Oh, uh, yeah, we do clear his whole board. For some reason, I didn't see that one getting hit. So we clear his whole board and deal six damage to the face. And now there is the big Temple Swing that we're looking for, right? Everything else in our hand is also like the Double Trouble, the way, the way that it makes sense to me in this deck is that the double trouble now every unit has plus one attack right so the double trouble is actually putting a lot of a lot of work uh because these units are threatening a lot of damage we can always just disintegrate that um i don't even know if we want to uh, i don't even know if we need to though you know i guess we should i guess we should right i guess we can make a rain plus disintegrate that hits the face and also gets rid of his units. So points down to 7 HP. We can do Adanaga Kaboros at burst B. And be able to get a 3 attack unit. So, oh wow, look at that. I wonder if I, I, wonder if I, should, if I should commit 
Okay, well, he, he lost anyways. But I was gonna, especially now that my units got hit, I was gonna commit the gem. I was thinking in my head, like, if I should commit it or not ahead of time. Um, but since my units got hit, like, one one each, I would have just committed one of them, one of the gems on one of them, and go from there. So, yeah, GG's. So, in this matchup, we'll be going up against Tarek Poppy. I should be able to do okay in this matchup. Um, we have a lot of, like, flocks and stuff that can, you know, damage the opponent's units. Uh, Death Hand doesn't seem that great. But I think I have to actually... I think I'm forced to keep it. I'm forced to keep it. I like the Double Trouble as a way to get blockers early on. We got the Flock. We can try to control them down. We get the Annie. Annie's pretty good. Annie's pretty good. Obviously, the opponent probably has Broadwind, which is the problem. Um... But I should have a decent time to potentially level in this game if the opponent doesn't get a challenger. So if the opponent doesn't get a challenger, we have a good chance of leveling up the Annie. Of course, they always get the brow window, right? That's no question about it. Yeah, they always, they always get the brow window. No question about it. Now, we could just do Death, death Hat on the, on the uh, brow wind. And that would threaten to kill it. And we can do disintegrate if the opponent has a sharp side on it. I guess technically, do I really want to commit this much? Do I really want to commit this much? I kind of think I do. I think I do. Because we can kill this right through there. I think we have to try to see if we can level up any of this game. I think unfortunately, based on how our hand looks, it might be like an any level of type of game. Um, we could sap. Oh, pointing, okay, our opponent even gets the sap, uh, uh, the fleet feather anyway, so it might not even matter. We might not have a way to level up the Annie. So we need we need to create we need to hit we need to use one more skill to be able to level up Annie. Because we can do the double trouble here to get blockers. And we will need to have one more thing. And I don't I don't know if we get it. So we might have to, we might have committed all of this for no reason. Because the opponent has nothing that's damaged to target with flock or school sheriff. Opponent gets another challenger. If they get poppy here, we just lose the game, I think. Yeah, that's not enough. He should always open. So you should always open here, uh, you pull here, you pull you pull for free. I guess you can pull here and just let yourself survive. I think opponent just made a whoopsie. Oh, we get to disintegrate. I mean, I, I mean that still levels up Annie, but it, it is a small annoyance that it wasn't like a make it right. I guess actually disintegrate better because we can just kill like one of these units. I guess opponent is saying, okay, you know, I'm going to attack like this. I know you're not going to have good blockers for it. I think we always go like this and just kill the Tarek and call it a day. We just kill the Tarek and call it a day. And he even stays alive now, right? Because now she's going to have three health. So Annie stays alive. Um, we get the Tivers. Tivers will actually be able to kill the Porridge. So Tivers can actually, actually, we can kill two units, right? Because the Protege is already going to be damaged. I guess technically it's not it. I guess we have Flock, right? We have Flock for this if we need to. Uh, I like the idea of just open attacking with the Annie. Just call it a day. I do think we need to Tivers now, though. Because Tivers gives us a blocker. And obviously we don't want to have to do Tie Walk. Ah, sorry, we, we cannot do the conservatory because we lose the Annie. Um, so, how do we do this? How do we do this? Because I want to... Oh, that's not the way to do it. I don't think that's correct from the opponent. I think we always, I think we always go like this. I think I cannot let that Poppy like, actually do anything. Because we can just flock her, right? We can just flock her. Opponent hits us for two. So opponent hits us for two. 
Ah, for four, sorry, because we can block the protector. He pulls the Annie. Or I guess he could also pull the Tibbers. We have the Fortune Croker with the opponent develops. We have another flock. That's unfortunate. So the opponent's gonna get value here. Yeah, opponent's gonna get value from Poppy. We at least get some value here from blockers. Do we do we do the create do we do the make it rain and no actually I think we do tie walk. I think we do tie walk and save the make it rain for later. The opponent could have the rally though. So if the opponent has the rally. So let's say that the opponent has the rally. It's not enough, right? Because we can if the opponent has a rally, we can. No, it is it is enough because this guy survives. I guess if the opponent has the rally, we can make it rain. So... I need to pass? If it's exactly rally, we lose? Okay, it's not a rally. It's not a rally. Fortunately, by us passing, because we're playing around the rally, it does mean that we lose... Uh, the value. I think it's always, I think it's always gonna be Blaze Edge on the Poppy, so that we can potentially flock her, flock her, and make it rain does more damage to his units. We probably wanna flock the Poppy before we commit the make it rain. To be honest. So we can flock Poppy here. We can also say make it rain for later. Okay, so we're gonna have to like scorch earth that Poppy then. I think we make it rain. I think we make it rain for the chance that we hit the Poppy and we do. We also hit the three one, which is what we're looking for. Now we attack with everything opponents forced to block, right? I guess we shouldn't attack with everything to be honest, because we can always Scorch Earth, this guy. So we don't attack. So at, at, we could have attacked with the Tybok. We could have attacked with the Tybok, right? We could have 100% attack with the Tybok because the opponent has not a, doesn't have a good blocker for it. Uh, we can just... We have two options. I guess we can just do it this way, right? There's, there's a pretty nasty red card. And then we can just Scorch Earth, like, in response to, to kill one of his units. We can block the Surgeoner with the Tivers and flock the Prodigy that's going to go after the Twisted Fate. Yeah, there you go. We, we should definitely attack with the Tybo last turn, right? If opponent doesn't do anything like this, it's the same thing. We still just Scorch Earth the Surgeoners next turn. I mean, this turn. Still going to be the same thing, my friend. Close. We almost threw the game, right? We almost threw the game by not attacking with Tybo. So the reason that I didn't want to attack with Tybo, uh, with, with Tivers, is because if the opponent had a way to summon, like, enough units to actually push damage, right? Uh, obviously they didn't, so yes, I'm not mattering, but, like... Because this, this deck doesn't have any, in, like, his deck doesn't have any reach, right? So the only way that they can actually kill us is through units. So I didn't want to lose my Tivers, I didn't want to lose my blockers. And in my head, but when I didn't attack with Tivers, I ended up also not attacking with Tybok, even though Tybok has no way to die there. So yeah, GG's. So in this matchup, we'll be going up against <laughs> the Mirror. So Annie Twisted Fate versus Annie Twisted Fate, both trying to do the whole combo. Um, I really like the Death Hand. I like at least one Death Hand. I probably don't keep two of them, but I like one because you can hit their Annie. And you can also hit... Like... The other stuff, right? I think we always Annie first. It's the same thing as summoning the Conservatory first, right? Because this is advancing it by one since we get to attack. Uh, so regardless, the Conservatory is going to be at nine. We can summon the Conservatory now in turn two. That would, that would This also allowed us to advance Annie by one. We can never do the Croaker on the Annie. Okay, we got a combo. So we got our combo pieces on the field. One is playing House Spider. 
We will get hit by three here, unfortunately. Let's actually do the Annie again. So we get to at least get her up to two and also get some value here. At one point, at some point, I do probably have to commit this though. At some point, I have to commit this because I don't think I can take that much damage from them. I wonder if he's thinking about. Oh wait, if he block, if they block like this, it's okay with me too. That's one less unit that I have to worry about attacking into us, so I'm okay with that. We're one ahead of the opponent on the conservatory, but then they also get a second conservatory, so that's a little bit annoying. Uh, that can hit us for another two. That's uh, that's gonna take it to fifteen. We could death hand this if the opponent has no twist to fate or no any. Might be okay doing it. Oh, I like this. I like the double trouble because he also advances our conservatory. If the opponent open attacks, we take the two. Yeah, so we always take the two here. We can double trouble, right? And that advances our conservatory by one. That's the whole purpose of this kind of deck. While also giving us two blockers. <laughs> we get the walking sands. I can do Sass Prayfin. Actually, Walking Sense is not bad because he also counts, right? So Walking Sense also counts for Conservatory, so we can get pretty ahead of the Conservatory. Opponent could Scorch Earth. Oh, Blaze Edge. So the opponent is trying to kill the Annie before she levels up. I think I like the Sap. I think I'm okay with the opponent killing Annie here. Because we have no way to level, at, level up Annie anyways. Oh, he's gonna red card. Okay, well, I should have, I could have played around that. I could have played around that. He kept exactly four mana, so he was always gonna red card, right? Yeah, that was that was so telegraphed, and we let it just happen. That's a little bit unfortunate. Could, could have could have done better than that. Not my cleanest play. At the very least, we could have passed and forced him to first decide to do it. I I just want him to block. So I'm just doing this so that the opponent can block, and because he, he, he also advances our our thing, right? He also gives me a free value here. Now we won't be able to kill that twisted fate just yet, but I'm not scared of it leveling up anytime, so I'm, I'm fine with this. Opponent hits to make it rain. Doesn't hit the sandstorm charger, but does hit the croaker. I think I'm fine attacking. If the opponent wants to take the five damage here. I, that was that would have been okay with me. They decide not to. Uh, now, we will trigger this shortly. Opponent has three, which is actually not great for him. I need to summon this now. So I need. I would like to summon this guy next turn. Sorry, not now. Yeah, so we can do this, and that will allow us to summon the uh, tie book next turn. Right? Which is pretty good. Uh, I'm, I think I'm fine doing the conservatory. The second one. Before we do the trouble. Because this is going to trigger anyway. So now we have this again. I guess if the opponent has a second TF, we get punished for it. Yeah, if the opponent has a second TF, we get punished for this. But then the second TF is going to die to the make it rain, which is going to be buffed up. We have just enough to do tie bulk and then on turn 8 do Blade's Edge plus Riptide. Okay, so opponent decided that they want to play tie bulk right now. Which makes sense. This will give them access to two tie bulks, right? Because that way on turn 8 they'll be able to have a second tie bulk on the field. But the opponent just committed a Blade's Edge. Which means that they're going to be lacking on ways to potentially trigger the Riptide Rex if they have it. Hmm. Meanwhile, we have... Make it rain, right? And flock. But again, I think as long as we keep the mana for Blaze Edge, we'll always be able to kill uh, his units. I'm always attacking with the Doom Keeper because if the opponent actually blocks that, we just block this next turn, right? Yeah, and I think he realized that now. Uh, you cannot, you cannot block with the tie book, otherwise you just give us the the value there. Uh, next turn, we can just make it rain, which gets rid of the Twisted Fate, as well as do Riptide Rats to do the rest. My problem here is... We might have to just make it rain anyways. So I think we have to make it rain. 
and we have to just get rid of his units now. I think I think keeping keeping like opponent has to attack, right? But I think trying to keep the Riptide Rats is a little bit too greedy for us. My problem here is that because we missed on the make event on the twist of fate, we can only do this. This does give us access to a second tie book. So now we have two tie books on the field. But we're at 8 HP, so the opponent gets his combo, we're in trouble. We trade, trade, trade. Opponent keeps twisted fate. We summon the tie book. Next time we open attack. This has overwhelm. And our, our, our cannon by Ratchet are doing now enough damage to kill the opponent. That's not enough. Even if you level up Twisted Fate, that's not enough. Because this is still doing sits, and then the Twisted Fate, um, and, and then the Riptide Rats finishes the game. We need to attack now. If the opponent has to disintegrate combo, then that's a problem. Yeah, and this is game. So this is the combo right here. I guess opponent could have... Okay, no, okay. So I, I thought the opponent could have their own Blaze Edge into Riptide Rats. That would be a way that they actually could finish us off. But they ended up not having it, so now we just rip tight rats and we win the game. Boom. Each of these are doing 4 to a unit and then 3 to the Nexus, so look at that. This is the combo right there. We got it up before the opponent did. And that's game. Whew. That was that was close, because I think, yeah, I think if, if that open attack means that we were vulnerable, right? That open attack does mean that we're vulnerable to a Make It Rain or a Blaze Edge into a Rip Tide. But even if we don't open attack, we're still vulnerable to that in response, right? So yeah, GG's. Hey, welcome back everybody. Hope you enjoyed those games. You can see how that combo and how powerful that combo is with Riptide Rats plus the Tide Bulk. It's really the whole reason why this deck makes sense. Uh, in terms of Mulligan, I think I like keeping Annie, obviously. So you definitely want to keep your Annie. And I definitely like keeping the Conservatory. So I think Annie and Conservatory are the main things that I want to keep. Uh, and then after that, it's going to depend on the matchup. If you're going against aggro, then you probably want to keep double trouble, make it rain, things that give you blocker or let you get room with the opponent's unit. If you're going against something like Demacia, you can keep flocks and disintegrates or or, 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 or stuff like that. If you're going against throws, you want to keep score sheriffs, right? The rest of your spells are going to be very matchup dependent, but almost every single time, in almost every single situation, I'm always keeping Annie and I'm always keeping the conservatory. Because the earlier you can put the conservatory down, the easier it is to trigger and make all your other spells just get so much more value from there. Uh, so that's my advice in terms of mulligan. Before I do my usual outro spill, I do want to say that we're going to see a little change in the channel over the next week. I am leaving for a work trip tomorrow. So if you're watching this on Thursday night, I'm going to be leaving on a work trip on Friday, uh, which means that I'm going to be away for about a whole week. So I cannot put LOR videos every single day like we usually do. Now, I have pre-recorded enough content to at least give you guys some videos every other day. Uh, so we will have a video obviously today Thursday then we'll have one Saturday one Monday one Wednesday And then we'll be back on Friday and be able to go back to daily uploads So for the next week, we are only gonna do a video every two days Sorry about that, but you know work is work and it's a pretty big project uh, that I do it for work So I'm gonna be traveling out of state for that. So, you know, it is what it is But if you like the content as always make sure to like the video below and subscribe to us We post LOR videos every single day usually Except for the next week where we're going to be skipping every other day. You can also find us on Twitch at Twitch Determined. Once I come back from this side work trip, I'm going to be able to actually stream a lot more. So keep a lookout for the streams there. And you can also find us on Twitter and Discord. The links to those are both in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all the support. And I'll see you all again Saturday, I guess. So, yeah.